So this time, okay, let's talk about priorities in clients with C5 spinal cord injury or cervical spinal cord injury. Now, listen to this class. I'd like to highlight one important thing once again, okay? You, would, you could have learned somewhere else or read somewhere else over the net or in tele, uh, educational articles or articles from your instructors or handouts that medication administration, so, so specifically if these are given either orally, okay, or if it is given subcutaneously as in the case of insulin, okay, can be delegated, okay? However, the question is, what happens if a client has dysphagia? And that's what occurs in a client with cervical spinal cord injury. Their swallowing ability is affected by the injury such that we could, uh, uh, we could conclude that in a client with C5 spinal cord injury, we could expect that the client could be having dysphagia. So if I ask you now, can we delegate oral medication administration to a client with C5 spinal cord injury? The answer is no. Because even if the task is routine, the client has a special condition which necessitates the judgment of a registered nurse. Okay? So, I have a video that discusses the highlights of priorities with cervical spinal cord injury and that's found on quick fix session seven okay so here i'm going to highlight the needs of clients with cervical spinal cord injury and for those who are taking the test you will later on know why okay i'm highlighting this concept let's move through it Okay, so here's a functional concept. The most urgent priority for a client with cervical spinal cord injury is to stabilize the respiratory function. So the priority would definitely be airway and breathing. So corticosteroids like methylprednisolone helps reduce inflammation in spinal cord injury. So let's try answering a sample question. After a diving accident, a client sustained a spinal cord injury at the level of cervical 5. Which of the following machineries, tools, and devices can the client use after hospitalization? Select all that apply. So we have here options like crutches, powered wheelchair, adapted car, push-button TV remote control, and voice-activated gadgets. To answer that question, we need to have a working knowledge on what a client with cervical spinal cord injury at the level of C5 can and cannot do. That's the way to do it. So we don't have any choice but to recall concepts, okay? And let's begin with the functional concept. Clients with C1 to C4 spinal cord injury will have paralysis from the neck down, so they are unable to breathe. They could be on a ventilator, impaired speaking ability. Definitely, they will have dysphagia, inability to control bowel and bladder function. So from neck down, it's going to be paralysis. So the problems would be three Bs, breathing, bowel, and bladder function, okay? Clients with C5 to C8 spinal cord injury will breathe independently. They can breathe independently. And a client with C5 injury can raise the arms and bend the elbows. Say so they will just need minimal assistance when they are dressing up. C6, client with C6 injury may drive an adapted car. When say adapted car, this is a vehicle that has been altered or modified to address the needs of a client with a, a C6 cervical injury. So in essence, um, it could be primarily okay, driven by the ability of the client to speak. So they, they, they would have um, computerized softwares installed in the car to facilitate okay, uh, driving for the patient. Little or no voluntary bowel and bladder control. A client with a C7 injury can do most activities of daily living. Okay, So which means if a client has a C7 injury, they will need minimal assistance with activities of daily living. That's the difference. In C1 to C4, they're paralyzed from neck down. So you have to provide complete assistance in activities of daily living. But from for a client with C7 injury, they can perform most activities of daily living. And for clients with C8 injury, they're able to grasp and release objects. Therefore, okay, let's summarize. 
So, in a client with C1 to C4 cervical injury, okay, if you may want to take a look at our illustration here, the parts of the body that are affected with the head and neck and, of course, the diaphragm. And for C5 to C8, the parts of the body that will be affected with the deltoids, biceps, wrist extenders, okay, and your triceps, okay. Therefore, for a client with C1 to C4 injury, they have paralysis from neck down, inability to breathe, cough, control, bowel, and bladder. Remember the three Bs again, breathing, bowel, and bladder control. They have impaired speaking ability, and they also have dysphagia. So may use powered wheelchair, will not be able to drive a car. Requires a 24-hour-a-day complete assistance on personal care, on eating, dressing, bathing, and getting out of bed. Here we go again. So do we need the RN to attend to this client? Yes. But what can the unlicensed assisted personnel do? The unlicensed assisted personnel could just assist. Okay, the client, when the client eats, when the client dresses up, when the client would need to be bathed, or when the client needs to get out of bed and be placed on a wheelchair, okay? Now, what about for a client with C5 to C8 injury? The client can breathe independently and speak normally. This is the difference, okay? So C1 to C4, the client could be on a ventilator. C5 to C8, the client can breathe independently. C1 to C4, they have impaired speaking ability. C5 to C8, the client can speak normally. So they can better use your voice-activated gadgets. So C5, they can raise their arms and bend the elbows. C6, may drive an adaptive vehicle. C7, can do most activities of daily living. And C8, able to grasp and release objects. So who needs complete assistance on personal care? When the cli a client has an injury from C1 to C4, who needs partial assistance, Okay. In the performance of activities of daily living, the client with C5 to C8 injury. Who can use voice-activated guide gets? Well, a client with C5 to C8 injury because they can speak normally. Okay. Now, we go back to the question. After a diving accident, a client sustained a spinal cord injury at the level of cervical 6. Remember, when you have a cervical spinal cord injury, okay, there's going to be paralysis or weakness from the neck down. Which of the following machineries, tools, and devices can the client use after hospitalization? If we go back to the illustration, so you have C6 injuries still, the deltoids, the biceps, the wrist extenders are affected. So which simply means there aren't going to be enough muscle power for the client to use crutches. So that's an X. But can they use a powered wheelchair? Yes. Adapted car? Yes. Push button, TV remote control? Yes. And voice activated gadgets? Yes. Okay. So that's very important to know. Okay. Now, in the care of the client with spinal cord injury, the unlicensed assisted personnel can obtain vital signs. Now, Take note, there's a difference between routinely obtaining vital signs from interpreting the vital signs. The one who should interpret the vital signs, judging whether the vital signs needs to be reported to the provider or not, would be the registered nurse. So who would know that the heart rate is low or the heart rate is high? That's the job of the nurse. But the unlicensed assistive personnel could take the vital signs. But the interpretation should be done by the RN. Assist with the activities of daily living. The, the UAP can do that. Gather and record input and output. But once again, to interpret it, whether it's increase or decrease, it's the job of the RN. Empty and record urinary catheter bag drainage. Assist with bedpan, urinal, and commode. Provide perineal care. Provide care for incontinence. Apply and change adult diapers. And report and record bowel elimination patterns. Take note, the unlicensed assisted personnel reports to the RN. They do not report directly to the physician or the doctor. They report to the RN. And the RN needs to validate the data that has been gathered. Although there's usually a lot of gray areas in terms of what's the difference between data gathering and assessment. Okay, If you're routinely just gathering data, like identifying the amount of urine output, you're gathering data. But when you say the urine output, is low, the urine has a reddish color, 
that's already interpreting the data, which is a part of assessment, and that's a job of the RN, not the unlicensed assistive personnel. Okay, so let's move on. Which of the, f the interventions can the registered nurse delegate to the unlicensed assistive personnel when providing care to a client with spinal cord injury at the level of cervical 4? What did we say a while back? From C1 to C4, there's going to be the three Bs, the problems of breathing, bowel, and bladder elimination, paralysis from neck down. The patient may have impaired speaking ability. The patient may have dysphagia, and the patient may, may, may not drive an adapted car. So, let's analyze, okay? Can unlicensed assisted personnel irrigate the urinary, urinary catheter? No. Irrigation of the urinary catheter is a sterile procedure, and that is usually done by the registered nurse. Administering PR and oral medication. Once again, this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Early on, I told you that oral administration of medication can be delegated to the unlicensed assisted personnel. However... I told you to contextualize your answer. We have a cervical for spinal cord injury, in which case the patient is having dysphagia. And the oral administration of medication needs the judgment and the knowledge of the registered nurse. So this is not just a simple routinary task. So that is an X. However, providing bed bath, yes, the UAP can do that. Assisting in exercises, you have the keyword assisting. So assessment is for the RN, assisting is for the unlicensed assisted personnel. So we put a check. Administering tube fittings. Now, this is once again important for you to note. The routine administration of tube fittings could be done by the unlicensed assisted personnel. But here, you have a client with a special need. So that is an X. Reporting clients' behavioral changes to the RN, yes. Okay, that could be done by the unlicensed assisted personnel. So if the unlicensed assisted personnel noted that the client sleeps most of the time or the client is stuttering, then those are behavioral changes that should be reported by the unlicensed assisted personnel or UAP to the RN. And then assisting with repositioning the client, you have the magic word assisting. So yes, because when you log roll the patient with spinal cord injury, you need at least three people to do that. So the answers, therefore, are what can be delegated to the unlicensed assisted personnel in the care of the spinal cord, uh, in the care of a client with spinal cord injury at the level of cervical four, be providing bed bath, assisting in exercises, reporting client's behavioral changes to the RN, and assisting with repositioning the client.